everybody welcome to this tutorial in this one we will be using blender 3.5 the newest release and so the first thing you're going to want to do is get the blender launcher the blender launcher you can go into any search engine and just type in blender launcher get it for windows get it for linux if you get it for windows come over very simple just download it open it uh, go ahead and run it. If you get this little Windows protection thing, just click more info, click run anyways, and that will throw you over into it. Now, I already have it, so I can't really install it again, but you are going to get this screen right here, and this is super important because what you want to do is click launch when system starts if you don't do anything else make sure to do that and then there's some other defaults and setup and i don't know if anyone else ever experienced this, but you just cannot seem to get this whole thing in the uh, screen so launch when system starts otherwise you're going to lose it it does have a couple of bugs but it is very very useful and i haven't had it crash in a long time so you can come over you got a library and that's what you have downloaded for stable, daily, and experimental. Then you have downloads for stable, daily, and experimental. So in order to get what I've got, go to the daily, excuse me, the experimental, and under downloads and experimental, you'll see cycles path guiding for January 26th. And that is the version that I am currently using. So if you're in a previous version, you may or may not see it. All right, so we're going to create a very quick scene. Shift A, drop in a plane. And you can scale that up down here with the drop down. Let that go. Take up a front view by pressing 1 on the number pad. Shift A. Let's go ahead and drop in a mesh monkey. G and Z. G and x and i want to just kind of bring this out to the edge of my setup here and bring it down just a touch more something like that and sub it because i want the light to hit it and look good and then i'll just apply that shift d g and x and move that over i've got my screencast keys on down here shift a drop in a light we're going to use a spotlight, G and Z, to kind of bring it up, and then you can scale it. All right, so we're going to get a general idea of how far this light actually is from the mesh and how big everything is. So come over to the measure tool, and we'll take up the front view, and you can just grab the center point of the light and bring down our measure tool. Bring it up a little bit. So I'm going to switch this. I've actually got it in feet. I've got this to go to metric. Okay, so we're at almost 7 meters, 6.5 or so meters away. So it's actually a pretty far distance. And if you were to look at that in Imperial, which is underneath the scene properties, that is 21 feet away. It's pretty high. And our goal here is to look at the distance and go over the inverse square law and what that means to the new features under the render tab. So if you come down to the render tab and go from GPU to CPU compute, it will expose the new feature path guiding. And you can drop that down and you'll see you have training samples, which it's going to train with the light bouncing off of diffuse surfaces so your indirect lighting is going to be recalculated and it's going to be more accurate uh, the bounce is going to be better i've actually got a full tutorial that goes through all the light settings and i will link to that in the description if you would like to go over that and learn a little bit more about the training samples what we're going to be talking about today is the uh, direct sampling under the diffuse where you now have a cosine product okay and 
understanding what the light fall off is, the inverse square law, and the cosine and the equations that you can come up with. Uh, you don't necessarily have to know the math, but if you have a slight understanding of what's going on with the lighting, it's going to help you set up a scene a lot better. So I'm going to do a good bit of drawing on the screen here. And you press 1 for your front view. And for the setup, we're going to want to be in Cycles, turn off the noise, go to World Properties, put the strength to 0 and hit Enter. And we're going to bring our light by clicking the light bulb properties here. And we're going to bring the power up to 1500. And the radius is not terribly important here, but there are some other settings we're going to want. Now the spot size, the angle here is super important. And so what we could do is we could bring this down to like 36. I'll press 1. I'm going to go into solid view again. And we have a couple things going on here. Uh, one is, and see if I can do this with the mouse. We have a nice, nope. We have a perpendicular line for the light source. It's coming down and hitting our surface. Okay, and then we have two angles coming out at 36 degrees. And I just kind of duplicate, we could do this tutorial with just one side, but I think it gives a better example with both sides. So we have the inverse square law. It's very simple once you get it. It's E equals I over D square. I also made a little bit of adjustment just to make it look a little bit more clear. So 7 meters, 8 meters. Now what we want to do is we want to actually find the distance between D1, which is here, and D2. Okay, and I want to find E2, which will be our outside edges, and of course E1, which as we discussed is the surface. Now this angle is important, and it's super easy to actually find that inside of Blender. Just come down to the light settings here. Put this to 1500, and we have a spot size, 36 degrees. And so our new equation, in order to find these measurements, is going to be E1, which is this here, is going to equal I times cos or cosine theta and that is going to be d1 uh, squared okay so that's d1 so what we want to do is we take our 1500 and we need to figure out what the cosine is and I got this nifty little website and it's rapidtables.com I'll provide a link in the description for this as well so what is this gonna actually be well if we check out our perpendicular line going straight down on D1 the angle is actually 0 so we can times this by 0 and so if we take the cosine of 0 and calculate it, it's actually 1. So what we can do is we can turn this back on for a moment. And we can see that our distance here is 7 meters. So we would divide this by 7 squared. 
And if I jump back over to the calculator, I put in 1500, and 7 times 7 would be 49. So we'll just go divided by 49, and it's going to equal 30.61. So I'm going to write down 30 for my light level here. And now we need to do the equation for the next one, which is going to be E2. So E2 is going to be equal to I times cosine. And so now I need to get the cosine of the angle, and the light angle was at 36 degrees. So if I grab the cosine of 36 and calculate that, I get point zero, well, point 0.8. And we're just going to go with point 0.8. So that's times the cosine of 0 0.8. And I know my writing is just horrible. Actually, we'll just leave that out of there, just make the point a little bit bigger. And we have a different distance here as well. And this one's 8 meters, okay? So now we have divided by 8 squared. And we can just kind of annotate 1500 here so you get the idea. So now if I take my 1500 and I divide that by the number we're going to get from time all right, so let's do the math on this. And if we pull up the calculator and type in 1,500 times 0.8, that gives us 1,200. And if we take the 1,200 and we now divide that by 64, which is our 8 squared, then we end up with 18.75. So if you took this and divided it by the 64, then you're going to get the 18.75. Okay, and so if you come back up, this light intensity here is now going to be at 18.75. Five, where the perpendicular light directly, you know, the objects directly under the light are going to be at a light intensity of 30. And you can look at this in another way too, uh, because you probably have to do some type of conversion between uh, lux and lumens and watts, and we're not going to get into all of that right now. Uh, but you can just look at it like... 1500 watts is what's coming down okay and then the math we did to get this it was actually come up with 1200 so you could s rudimentarily and non-mathematically just say this is 1200 watts over here and this is 1500 watts over here and so you're minus 300 watts fall off in the light. And then if you go back and look, the 18 is almost half of the original light that we had over here. So now let's go play with the light a little bit. So I'm going to jump over into cycles and just kind of give you the general idea. And if you rotate this light in any direction, what you've done is you've changed the angle of the light in a very big way and it's going to affect your lighting so if you're coming in at 30 degree angles 40 degree angles and all this uh, other good stuff then your light now your intensity is here and you can see that and then you've kind of got these layers going out where the falloff gets so much greater that if you have any objects out here, 
they're not receiving a lot of light. Now, a lot of that gets remedied with the path guiding and everything we just discussed, but it's still standard that if you just have one light pointing into your scene here, you're only going to have uh, so much intensity as it goes out. So how the light is going to look in your scene still matters. And the further away, so if I take this and let's just move this light. I'll put it on the Z axis and kind of move it out and then G and X and kind of move it over. You can now see the light intensity has decreased. So obviously the further away you are from the light, the less you're going to get. Now if you have these lights in here, uh, your lights can move with the scene. And I'm not going to be able to show you all that, but I will link a video from NVIDIA that shows you all this. And as the scene's moving, the lights are still going to contribute. So one of those things, the training samples and the algorithm that's built in here is going to sample all that. And it's going to do that for surface and it's going to do it for volume. And pretty soon we will have uh, GPU compute for this very, very soon. I know that's one of those priorities. And NVIDIA is, the algorithm is working with your NVIDIA card with Blender. So if you don't have that enabled, you definitely need to come up and use that. I use optics, okay, uh, predominantly, and that is the NVIDIA setup. Now, underneath the denoising, my denoiser is set to optics as well. And then in the 3D viewport, when I have denoising on, I can do it here as well. And then, you know, you have to have, just real quick, your training samples are at 128. Well, your first 128 samples are the training samples, so you wouldn't want to do that. You'd want to put them, you know, like 128 times 2, make it 256 on your samples and keep it nice and even. Computers, machine language always loves the 256. 512, 1048, 2048, 4096, and so on. And so those numbers just kind of work better. I'm over at the NVIDIA website where a bunch of research has gone into spatial temporal light rendering. Okay, and so what that means with the RIS or the resample important sampling, you're now going to be able to have light transported within your scene uh, at fewer samples per pixel. So this is pretty important. So spatial temporal lighting means that all these lights now have an equal opportunity, if you will, within the scene to contribute light. If things are a little sluggish right now, you're going to have the GPU compute coming soon. So I can't wait for that. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. If you need a follow-up video on this or you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial lesson.